Hey guys, it's Leanna, and I'm here today to talk about the book series that I do not intend to finish. Being a fantasy, sci-fi, primarily fantasy reader, the starting of series is a frequent occurrence. The finishing of series is less frequent, but these are, there's actually quite a few series that are started, and I do not intend to ever finish. Some are ones that I thought about pushing myself to, and others are ones that I was probably never gonna finish it, so it won't be a shock that it's on this list. I have actually quite a few. So let's just get into it, shall we? First up is Dune. Uh, I don't think I super need to explain that. I posted a review for Dune, which was somewhat critical. I thought it was pretty balanced. I wasn't in love with Dune, but I think I see why it's a classic. There's a lot to it in terms of reading enjoyment. I, it wasn't all that enjoyable for me. I thought it had pros and cons. People acted like I murdered their mother. <laughs> and I was already not super interested in reading the rest of the books and definitely not anymore. <laughs> in a similar vein, the Stormlight Archive. I did actually originally think maybe possibly I might consider reading Words of Radiance and seeing if maybe if I read on, I might begin to get into it. I didn't think it likely, but I was kind of, I mean, it's such an epic series that everyone is so into that I was originally considering giving it that shot. And um, it has become legend now, the reaction that I got on my Way of Kings video. So um, absolutely not. In the way that you're often able to judge people by the company that they keep, you can likewise judge books and fandoms by the people who love them. And the vitriol that has been thrown my way over the fact that I did not love the book. Yeah, I have no interest in being a member of that fandom. Uh, next is Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. I was originally going to try to push through. I'm pu I was pushing myself and the fandom is also in a very different way from Stormlight Archive. It's just very extra and very intense. And I have no interest in being a member of that fandom either because those books I find fairly problematic. And it was just kind of a light Slightly problematic YA romance kind of thing. And I thought might be some decent escapism. It's relevant to the book community talks about those books. I kind of want to know what's going on. I want to be in the know. But I, those books were getting longer and longer and I just was not enjoying them. So I read like th three of the core novels and then the prequel bind up of short stories. So I read like four that are part of the Throne of Glass series or saga. And it's just not for me. I'm happy for everybody that loves those books. It's great, but not for me. Next up is Mistborn, um, because era two. <laughs> I finished the Mistborn trilogy, but I know there's a second era of Mistborn that takes place many, 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 many years after the Mistborn original trilogy. And again, originally, even though the end of the Mistborn trilogy left me very... Mm, I, I did not care for the way that the Mistborn trilogy ended, the sort of resolution that we were given kind of ruined it for me. I was still interested in, in reading the second era because it was, as from what I gather, the concept of pushing your fantasy story into a more modern age that has independently evolved and isn't based on our modern age. It's just the natural progression of things in the way that in our real world, as in technology improves, society changes, Technology improves, society changes, and like there is a natural, like things aren't stagnant, and most fantasies treat the world as stagnant. It's just this medieval or renaissance kind of world that never seems to progress beyond that. So the idea of progressing your world to a slightly more industrial age, which is what Joe Abercrombie did with a little hatred, interested me. But once again, the reaction I got for being dissatisfied with the ending of Mistborn Trilogy, and then the reaction that I got on Stormlight, has just really put me off the idea of reading Sanderson. I do own Skyward and I'm kind of, because I've never read it, Sanderson writes, so I've never read any sci-fi by Sanderson. So to complete my Sanderson journey, I feel like I ought to, and I own it. And I've heard things, decent things, that it's kind of like, just like a fun adventure. So I might read that. But Mistborn, anything that's in the Cosmere, I've just been, I have been so beaten down by the fans who I imagine their purpose is to get the world to love Sanderson. And all they are doing is pushing people away because again, I would have considered reading Words of Radiance. I would have, I was interested in reading the second era of Mistborn, but the thought of picking up a Sanderson book makes me want to vomit at this point because I just associate it with all of those people who, who 
behave so inappropriately to a, an independent book reviewer who's has no power or sway over the sales of the books or anyone else reading them. That that level of hatred and vitriol, um, I, have, I have no interest in being reminded of that existing. And reading a Sanderson book, I would necessarily need to talk about those books on my channel because I talk about everything that I read. And if I did not like those books, I feel like those people will come back and say, you're just reading them so that you can hate on it again, which isn't true. Or if I end up liking it, they'll say, see, you were wrong all along and you're an idiot woman. And I have no interest in having either conversation. So good job, guys. All you have done is ensured the fact that I will never, ever read a Sanderson Cosmere book again. Whew, sorry, I had to get that off my chest. <laughs> Next up is The Mortal Instruments by Cassandra Clare. Um, I love the Infernal Devices, and I read it before I even really knew what the Shadowhunters were. I just saw the cover and thought it looked cool. And then discovered that it was actually a prequel for the Mortal Instruments. And then my understanding was that I should read the Mortal Instruments in order to then read The Dark Artifices and now The Last Hours. And I tried, I, God knows I tried so hard to read The Mortal Instruments. I got through two of them. And the word is got through. Not a good time. <laughs> I know they're the first series she wrote, so understandably they would be the, the poorest writing, the weakest, but oh god. I already don't like modern settings, and the characters are too dumb to live. It's so angsty and bad. Infernal Devices is angsty, but it's, it's you know, satisfying and heart-wrenching. The Mortal Instruments is just, I just can't do it, so I've given up. If I, if I, there's something that confuses me about the Shadowhunter world, because I do want to read the Dark Artifices, if there's something that I'm missing, I'm, I will go to like the Shadowhunter wiki and figure out what I'm not getting. <laughs> Next up is Aurora Rising. I think the series is called Aurora Rising. Uh, that's the name of the first book. I'm not aware of there being a series name different from that. Hated it. I have no interest in seeing where that story goes. That book reads to me like a cash grab from a couple of authors who are like, people love snark and sci-fi. Worked in Illuminate. All we need is snark and sci-fi. Here's another. We just vomited up another one for you. <laughs> I hated it, have like a nearly hour long negative rant review of that book. And again, unlike, unlike Stormlight Archive, which I thought might possibly end up being something that I might get into if I read the next one, like maybe, like I, I'm not sure, but I'm willing to give it a shot. Aurora Rising seems like garbage to begin with and it doesn't, it, it lacks um, a sincerity, which I feel like Stormlight has. Like, I think Brandon Sanderson is pouring kind of his soul into writing this expansive world. I do, I think it's flawed deeply, but there is a sincere, a sincere desire to craft and build this world and this story. Aurora Rising reads to me as just such a cash grab and that puts me off. Next up is Wicked Saints by Emily, Dunk, Emily A. Duncan? Emily Duncan. Uh, again, I have a rant review for the first book when I knew there would be a second book coming out and I have had people ask me to read the second book so that I can rant about it and I never pick up books that I think I'm going to hate. As many rants as I have on my channel, you may not think that's true, but I always pick up books that I think I'm going to like or at least find interesting and oftentimes I am let down, but I never intentionally pick up a book in order to hate read it. I, why would I waste my time? So I was going to see if the reviews for Ruthless Gods were from people who were iffy about the first one, like me, or I mean, clearly interested enough to pick up the second one, but didn't especially love the first one. If they reviewed the second one and said, oh, wow, she really turned it around. It's like a whole other ball game. Like whatever you didn't like about Wicked Saints, like it's none of that in here. And it's like really good now. I would have picked it up, but all the reviews I've seen are that it's it's same, if not worse. So if you love Wicked Saints, then you might love then you probably love Ruthless, Ruthless Gods because she just goes further down whatever bad paths she was already on. So no thank you. Uh, next up is Zero Repeat Forever, which again is the name of the first book and I'm not aware of there being a series overarching name for it, which is a YA kind of sci-fi dystopian that was highly recommended to me and the cover is gorgeous and the naked book is gorgeous. Um, and it was so boring and mediocre and utterly forgettable. <laughs> I want to say like it's so bad just because the book is so damn gorgeous. And again, it was recommended to me, but it's not bad. It's just extremely cliche and there's like almost nothing original about it. So yeah, not for me. Next is The Faithful and the Fallen. And one of my most recent videos is a rant for the first book in that series. So this comes as no surprise. I bought the whole series before reading it because I was so sure that I was going to like it and I hated it, and I do not have any reason to believe the series gets better, and I have no interest in giving it a chance, so 
no, thank you. I was all set to plow to chew through this long Viking inspired fantasy series. I was so excited. Nope, nope, <laughs> one and done. Uh, next up is The Guinevere Deception by Carson White, which again is the name of the first book. I know there's another one for sure, possibly two coming out that again, I'm not aware of there being an overarching series name, but that series, I have a rant review <laughs> for the first book in combination with Sorcery of Thorns, which is a standalone, so I'm off ski on that one. But it's an Arthurian inspired story where Guinevere is not Guinevere, but a changeling sent to impersonate Guinevere. And the whole thing was strange and boring and juvenile and made no sense. <laughs> so yes, the ending left me with questions, but they were the kind of questions where I'm just like, why the fuck would you write it like this? <laughs> so I'm really not interested in seeing where it goes or seeing the answers to the mystery of who is doing what or what the ultimate plan here is with this changeling situation. Whatever's identity is, is keeps being thrown at you as something mysterious, but like, honestly, I don't know, do not give a shit. Next is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahurin. I think is her name, Mahurin. This was hesitantly recommended to me because I, I have been known, thanks mainly to Amanda, for picking up and enjoying a romance now and again, mainly Tessadir and Grace Draven. So, I was, it was suggested to me that I'd read this. It was gifted to me so that I would read it. And it was so bad. I have a vlog rant thing on my channel for it. If you want to see. The romance was bad. The story was bad. The world was bad. The magic was bad. It was just bad, 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 bad. It wasn't the kind of book where like, because again, like I read books like The Infernal Devices and Shatter Me and stuff where it's kind of like just like this trashy, bingy, oversaturated, overdramatic romance or something like that with like world stakes and blah 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 like I can I've been known to get into that but you have to have written compelling enough characters to where I can like sink my teeth into them and get invested and Serpent and Dove the characters were fairly two-dimensional and what there was of a character was pretty insufferable so mm, no thank you. Next is The Witchlands by Susan Dennard. This has been often I've seen people talk about how this is a good bridging series if you're kind of feeling like YA is is not doing it for you enough anymore and you're interested in going into deep, dipping your toes into the waters of high fantasy and adult fantasy, that this is a good one to kind of segue because it's it's a, it reads a little bit more like adult fantasy, but it is YA. And I would not disagree in the style of the writing and the style of the world building. It does come across more like adult or high fantasy, but bad adult or <laughs> high fantasy. Just because you're adult fantasy doesn't mean you're good. So it just, it's it's very convoluted and boring to me. And I just could not get into it. The characters, the characters are kind of like YA, like so these sort of insufferable know-it-alls that I can't really root for or identify with. The world is, there's a lot of intricate detail that is thrown at you, but it doesn't feel organic. It doesn't feel like a world is being built. It just feels like you're being given a bunch of facts to memorize like you would in like a college class that's a bad college class where you're just like learning like facts for an exam. That's almost the feel of it where like there's constantly all these like complicated facts being given to you about the magic, the world, the history, and it's just like dumped at you in a way that doesn't feel like I'm learning and discovering a world. It's just like information, <laughs> not a story. So I, I read two of them. I know there's a, a prequel novella and the third one has, is out. I think there's going to be five. Not sure, but I wanted to get into it. It seemed like a series I'd be into because people always talk about the female friendship in it. I did not like the characters, did not get into the story. The world was not for me. <laughs> Next up, The Great Coats by Sebastian de Castell. Oh my god. I ranted for so long about that book when I read it. I read it uh, not last year, but the year before because so many people have compared it to the lives of Locke Lamora and said that if you like those like bantery kind of crew of like somewhat miscreant hearts of gold kind of thing, that this is a great series for that. And I was so excited to read it. And that book, oh my God, it wasn't just bad. It was just like, what the fuck? There's a nun that basically like rape heals the protagonist like she he says no but she ties him to a bed and like fucks him to health and then he's like thank you and then leaves and there's like a like a whole like the purge you know like the movie the purge where there's like you can commit any crimes you want for like 24 hours well there's a city 
that is doing the purge in that book where like every night for a week or something all bets are off and all crimes are legal and i was just like what like the twist in the story which like i mean i won't spoil it for you in case you want to read it but the twist that's being teased the entire time that there's like something more going on there's something else happening here there's some other plan in play when you find out what that is oh ugh, no oh no oh my god that book was so ugh. why why i have no interest in reading any more of those books because what the fuck. Next I have The Diviners by Libba Bray, which is a well-loved YA series, which I was really excited to read. It's 1920s, like, prohibition America, but there's, like, psychics and, like, I don't know, paranormal kind of stuff going on, and yeah, and it's, like, a little on the horror side. And I was really excited to read something that sounded so exciting. You, you rarely see a setting like that, especially in YA, and so many people love the series, and I was really excited to read it. And it was really boring, honestly, not all that scary, and it was so long, and I didn't like the characters, especially the- there's several main characters that you follow, but there's one, like, main main character, the way that, like, Six of Crows, yes, there's six characters you follow, but you mainly, like, Kaz is the main character. And the main character in The Diviners, she's kind of insufferable, so, like, I kept being like, you know, hope something bad happens to you and you learn your fucking lesson. <laughs> yeah, not for me. Then The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer, which, again, is very well loved, and I read the first book, thought it was, like, better than I expected, but, like, a three stars, where I was like, oh, it, was, it was more enjoyable than I expected. But everyone kept saying, yeah, well, the first one's the weakest one of the lot, so if you like the first one, keep reading, because they just get better. I read Scarlet, and I didn't like it nearly as much as I liked Cinder, which I expected to like out of all of them. I expected to like Scarlet the best, because I love wolves, um, I like Red Riding Hood, I liked- that one sounded like it would be my jam. And, uh-uh. <laughs> It was terrible. Oh my god, I hated it. So, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna keep reading that series. And last, but I suppose not not least, because this wasn't ranked in any like particular order, but Outlander by Diana Gabaldon Gabaldon, however you say it. I read the first book a long time ago and I didn't love it. But then I did kind of try to pick up the second book and I just I was like, nah, I can't do this. I DNF'd it. So I watched the show because the show is just like fun. Just a bunch of dudes and kilts and the music and it's a good time. I watch it with my mom. But the books like the thing that makes the show bearable is that for for the most part, you really don't get Claire's insufferable internal monologue, which makes things so much worse because she already does a lot of dumb stuff that's infuriating. But when she's just doing the dumb stuff that's infuriating, you're like, that's dumb and you shouldn't do it. And usually Jamie comes around to be like, you infuriating Sassanak, like, don't do that. And I'm just like, yeah, don't fucking do that. But in the book, you get her internal monologue being all uppity, <laughs> being like, why shouldn't I do it? And I'm like, ah! and I'm just like, do you have a death wish? You're in a historical time period, woman. Like, you can't mouth off to the men who have all the power in this situation. Like, it's kind of that problem with, like, talking Jack the Ripper and stories like that, where it's a historical time period and you have this, like, hashtag feminism character who's just mouthing off. And I'm like, do you have no sense of self-preservation? Like, I understand that it's frustrating as a woman, even in the modern day. Like, being told no in situations where a man would be told yes. <laughs> yes, that's frustrating. That you're not taken seriously, that you're viewed as your parts rather than a human. Like, of course, that's infuriating. But this sense of entitlement and this, like, how dare you talk to me that way? I'm just like, you do understand that in this historical time period, young lady, you have, like, zero rights. So, yeah, it's frustrating as fuck. But do you want to die? <laughs> because Jamie is basically telling you, shut the fuck up because... I don't want you to die. <laughs> and she's like, ah! <laughs> it's like, oh my god. So again, in the show, she still does dumb stuff that is gonna get her killed, and Jamie has to save her. In the book, in her head, she's so entitled about it and uppity about it, and just like, well, why shouldn't she do it? And how dare Jamie tell her not to do it? And I'm just like, he's trying to help you, woman. <sighs> anyway, those are all the series so far that I have picked up and do not intend to finish. I'm sure more will be added to this list <laughs> in my lifetime. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below if there are any series that you picked up and did not finish. If any of the series on what, this list that I had today are series that you picked up and did not finish or if these are series that you did finish and you can let me know if I am right <laughs> in my decision to not finish them because they don't get better or if I really ought to give them a second chance because you like me considered not finishing them but then you did and you're really glad you did now let me know I'm not unreasonable I might change my mind anywho I post bookish videos on Saturdays Right now I'm posting vlogs, as of the filming of this video, I'm posting vlogs on Tuesdays and Thursdays um, until further notice. So let me know all the things in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. 
and I'll see you when I see you.